Uh, we're going to start off our uh, cervical segment today and we're going to start off with assessment of the mid cervical spine, uh, mid cervical palpation, uh, motion assessment, joint play assessment. And our first movement is going to be uh, seated P to A joint play. So for the seated P to A joint play, our patient is neutral, seated, seated upright. Remember, joint play is the little jiggle that takes place in the joint when the joint's in the neutral position. So you have to have some patient position awareness when you do this because if you don't, you can be palpating like this or like this and you're really not gonna feel anything, all right? So your patient has to be in a neutral position. I'm gonna use my elbow to support the shoulder. I'm gonna come in close. My forearm is gonna be alongside of the head, face and, and head. I'm holding the hand, I'm in close. I'm um, using my thumb and my index and middle finger to, to uh, palpate the articular pillars between the cervical thoracic junction and the upper cervical spine. And I'm going to follow along the plane of the facets. I'm going to come in and up, in and up. Each contact is going to cover at least two segments, maybe three, so I'm going to get only about maybe four passes through. Just to, so the camera can see what this looks like. My elbow is in front, I'm in close. All right, my patient feels very secure so they can relax and stay in this upright position. I'll start out with a push and I squeeze it in. It's smooth, it's never jabby. I see students jab all the time, all right? So nice, smooth, in and up. Come up another level, in and up. Up another level, in and up. And then I'm up, up at the top and in and up. All right. What I'll usually find when I do this palpation for play is that I'll encounter or decrease play in the suboccipital and upper cervical area often. I'll encounter decreased play in the lower cervical and cervical thoracic junction. And I'll encounter increased movement, increased give, mushiness in the mid cervical spine. Very, very typical. Occasionally they'll count, encounter some restrictions in that uh, mid cervical area. However, uh, they're, they're usually not, in my opinion, not major and there are some other mo movements that we'll talk about later that are very important to check in that mid-cervical area. Mid-cervical area is often hyperextended, it's missing flexion, and we'll come back to that. So once, we, once we've targeted an area to palpate in more detail, now we can get into uh, seated segmental motion palpation of the individual segments and we'll check end range while we're at it as well. We're going to palpate for extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. So I'm going to sit down for this one. Okay, and we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit on this. Number of contacts available. I'm going to do this on both, I would do this on both sides. However, just because the camera's to my left, I'm going to be demonstrating this on the left side. But keep in mind, you always want to compare right and left. So you can start with your patient in a neutral position. Use a digital contact right over the facet, right over the articular pillar. Let's say there's C2, C3, C4. I have two fingers right over the facet. So from this position, I'm, gonna, I'm going to extend. So there's my segmental range of motion and extension. And then again, push between my two hands and get that end feel, P to A glide in extension. Not jabby, it's just a nice smooth movement. With my digits in the same exact place, now I can rotate around, follow that motion around in right rotation, and then at the end, add my overpressure with my digits and my hands. There's some nice give there as I palpate around. Come back to the center. Go into in this case, left lateral flexion. I haven't even moved my digits. I'm in the same place right over the articular pillar, and I push across from left to right. Segmental motion as I follow it to the end, and then squeeze between the two contacts to assess that left lateral flexion and feel. So like I said, I'm gonna go up a level. I'm gonna do the same thing to compare it. So there is my extension range of motion extension, and then end play. Rotation above, end play. Lateral flexion, end feel, end feel. I'm gonna go down a level, right? 
digital contact right over the pillar, extension, push forward, rotation, follow it around, push for the end feel, and then lateral flexion and push for the end feel. Now, most of the time I had my hand orient oriented this way. Some docs like to turn the hand down, and I particularly actually like this contact quite a bit. So instead of doing this with my contact, I can just come in with a couple of digits, just like that, and I'll just demonstrate this with this variation of the contact. So there's extension, range of motion, and, and, and feel. Rotation, range of motion, over pressure, and end feel. Lateral flexion, range of motion, over pressure, and end feel. So that's my seated assessment of that mid cervical area. While we're here, we can also palpate for A to P glide. So why A to P glide? Right? For the most part, throughout your, your uh, your technique classes, I believe you've mainly been doing P to A. All right? You've been checking P to A, you've been adjusting P to A, and now we're introducing this A to P. So would everyone agree that when you rotate to the right, the left moves P to A and the right moves A to P? All right? One thing to keep in mind, Matt, is a, a, a joint in its overall movement will always, the axis of movement, will always shift to the restriction. In other words, if you have an A to P restriction on the right, right, and the left is moving pretty well, right, if I adjust P to A on the right, I'm just going to pivot it, or P to A on the left, I'm just going to pivot it around the right side. I'm really not going to affect the, the restriction. All right. So that's one of the reasons it's important to, to check for that A to P in the cervical spine. Because we can in the cervical spine. Can't really practically do that in the thoracic or the lumbar spine, but in the cervical spine we can. The other thing to keep in mind is that as we rotate, that's coupled with flexion. Right? So the mid-cervical spine is often hyperextended. It's too far forward, the forward head carriage. So the motion that's missing there is the ability to flex. So when we do our A to P movement, we're also flexing that area as well. And we when we find those restrictions and we do those adjustments in that mid-cervical area, we're coupling the A to P movement with flexion. All right? And that's, that's probably the most common adjustment I give in that mid-cervical area. I'm very rarely adjusting C4, C5, C6 using HVLA except for the AP flexion combination movement. That's because most of the restrictions that I manipulate are CO, C1, C1, C2, C7, T1, T1, T2. All right? In the typical ways we usually do, lateral flexion, P to A rotation, uh, and such. All right? So let's look at how to palpate this. It's a delicate palpation. <clears throat> You need to, to push the SCM aside a bit, and what you're going to do is just uh, make a contact on the anterior lateral portion of the articular pillar, right? Just a nice, soft digital contact. And then you're going to flex the patient over the contact. Then you're going to laterally bend it to the side, the contact's still very light, and you're also going to rotate it to that side as well. Then what I do with my contact still in place, again, I squeeze the two hands towards each other as I bring that into flexion and anterior to posterior rotation. You can also go up a level, right? get up a little higher, again, flex, rotate, laterally bend, and again, apply that over pressure. I can go down a level, again, being very delicate over that sensitive anterolateral lateral transverse processes, the tissue is sensitive. Now I'm down at the lower part. Flex, laterally flex, rotate to the same side and add that movement in there. So that's my A to P palpation. You can also do this supine. So now we're going to do some of these mid-cervical assessments in a supine position. I'm going to start off with my headpiece neutral. 
Uh, I'm just going to go back to the, the, the original palpation that we did. So your, your segmental range of motion for uh, lateral flexion, rotation, and extension, and also uh, applying overpressure to assess and feel. So did uh, index pillar contact. I'm over C4, C5. All right. The key here is to really control the head with your hands. Right, so I'm moving, the movement's being created by my hands. My contact's in place. I'm going to rotate into to the left, P to A on the left, on the right rather, P to A on the right, and then I apply over pressure to assess the end feel. My digit's not going to even move. I'm just going to isolate it to lateral flexion, right, and palpate across for my end feel in right lateral flexion. So just to clarify, right, uh, P to A on the right, left rotation, P to A glide on the right, right lateral flexion, and the vector is from right to left as we assess that end feel. For extension, I have my digits right over the facets going to bring the cervical spine into extension for my range of motion and then apply an upward movement for the end feel. Right. Now for the A to P glide, <coughs> headpiece is going to be in a bit more flexion. I'm going to use my thumb, just put the hands on, I'm going to use my thumb to capture the anterior lateral pillar. Right? And this is, this is a nice palpation because once you can do this palpation well, this segues right into the manipulation that you'll do for it in this position as well. So my thumb is going to get a nice firm, not too hard. I don't want to cut off uh, the venous pressure. I don't have to really worry about arterial pressure. That's very high. But I don't want to cut off any venous pressure here. Just enough to make a nice firm contact. My forearm is going to be on the forehead and my other hand is going to grip maximally right over the side of the head. And what I'll do is I'll capture that, that anterolateral pillar, bring it around, it's already in flexion, and I'll apply over pressure. I can move my contact down a little bit to assess a little bit lower. And I can bring my contact up a little bit to assess a little bit higher. And of course, I would compare that to the other side. So that's my anterior to posterior palpation coupled with flexion in the supine position. Okay, so in the supine position, we can also palpate for that coupled movement of a lateral flexion, uh, contralateral rotation, and anterior sagittal glide. Start with both hands on top of the head, retract, bring it over to isolate the movement, rotate back to the midline, and then apply your pressure across towards the front of the opposite shoulder. Right. So that'd be your coupled movement COC1. We can also uh, hold underneath the head with one hand, place the other hand on top of the head, and assess for how much give there is when we apply that flexion. Okay. Similarly, I can use my middle digits or index fingers right over the, the lateral portions of the C1 transverse processes. Use my hands to hold the head, isolate, in this case, right lateral flexion, and gently push across from right to left, and then left to right. Next, we will use our fingertips to palpate upper cervical extension. We will curl our fingers and contact over the posterior arch of C1. I'm going to let the upper cervical spine extend, and I'm going to palpate and feel of extension at C1, C2. Then, moving the contact slightly laterally, apply some P to A glide for left rotation and feel and then shift the tissue pull lateral to medial and turn that movement into right lateral 
flexion and feel for C1, C2. Upper cervical spine motion assessment, coupled COC1 motion for lateral flexion, contralateral rotation, and anterior sagittal glide. We'll start with the patient retracted. Hands are going to go on top of the head. I'm going to step to my right a little bit. My digits are on the occiput, right on the mastoid, so I can control the movement of the head. I isolate the movement to the top, rotate the nose right back to the midline, and then apply some overpressure to assess that end feel of this coupled movement. I'm going to compare it to the other side. I'm going to step to the left a little bit, start with retraction, bend to the left, rotate the nose back to the midline, and apply my overpressure for my anterior sagittal glide. The next movement is flexion. Flexion is often lost up here because this area is usually extended due to a forward head carriage. So I'm going to place one hand approximately on the hairline. The other hand is going to go in the back underneath the occiput. I'm going to isolate the movement to the top with both hands, apply some overpressure to get a sense of what that range of motion is like and appreciate the end feel. You can also palpate this individually with my thumb on one side at a time, the other hand on the side of the head, and I'll use both hands to control that motion and assess, in this case, flexion on the left side, my thumb's on the left occiput, and I'll compare that to the right. This hand's going to just be holding the head and isolating flexion on the right. You can also assess C1, C2 in this position in a variety of ways. I'm going to take my middle digit, place it right over the most lateral aspect of the transverse processes, hold the head, isolate that lateral flexion to the top with both hands, and gently push on that left transverse process from left to right. Appreciate that range of motion and glide. And as I go to the right, I isolate the motion to the top, and with my right middle finger contacting the TP, I push across from right to left. I can also palpate this in a traditional pillar index way, if you will, but instead of the, the uh, pillar, we're going to use the posterior arch of C1. So I just put my index uh, and middle finger right on the posterior arch of C1. I can just bend this backwards into extension over my contact and gently press forward for that end feel of extension, which is usually mushy. There's usually not much restriction up here in extension. at C1, C2 anyway. With my contact in the same place, I can rotate this around to the right and apply overpressure with both hands for right rotation, range of motion, segmental range of motion, and uh, end feel. And with my contact again in the same place, I'm going to move it outboard a little bit. I can laterally bend to the left and spring across from left to right for left lateral glide, left lateral flexion.